Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chauvet, and welcome to an Al Atiyah Foundation activity. First, let me congratulate you belatedly on your appointment as Chairman of the Board of IFP. Yes, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Firstly, some of our readers outside the world of energy will not know too much about IFP and, and its work. So can you first describe the nature of IFP Energie Nouvelle and what exactly does it do? In, in French, we pronounce uh, ISPEN. This is, uh, as you mentioned, the acronym uh, of the uh, Institute for Petrol and uh, New Energy. Energies. We have been uh, created uh, just after the Second World War with one mission at that time. It was uh, to make R&D for oil and gas sector. And 10 years ago, uh, a new mission has been added uh, for IFPEN. It was to work on green technologies and green energies. And we succeed to do that in 10 years, coming from starting from scratch in the field of new energies. We are now up to 50 per, 50, 55 percent, to be precise, of activity in the green field. So that's a great success. And the question is how, how we succeed to do that. And the reason is, uh, is because we because of the work we have done in the past on uh, in oil and gas, we have developed uh, strong competencies in various fields, for example, obviously geoscience, uh, physics, chemistry, mechanics, uh, applied mathematics, and we have added new competencies more recently in the field of uh, biotechnologies and uh, artificial intelligence. And with all those competencies, you, you can do great things in the field of green energies. Then uh, the focus, if, if you focus now more and more, 55% you said, on new energies, uh, then the focus of IFP moves away from traditional fossil fuels uh, towards wind and solar energy. Uh, we, have, we have not abandoned oil and gas sector. We are still, uh, we will talk perhaps later about those uh, mm -hmm. uh, historical activity activities. Uh, in the green uh, technology, we are not working, to be very clear, on solar energy nowadays. We are working on uh, ver various other subjects such as uh, geothermal energy, uh, wind power, especially offshore wind power and floating uh, wind power. We are working also on hydrogen. We are working on uh, biofuels and the bioproducts uh, in the field of mobility we are working on uh, electric motorizations and uh, last but not least we work also on the uh, important question of the storage of energy and especially the storage of electricity so no power uh, no solar power but uh, a lot of things okay can you tell us about uh, IFP's role in promoting the circular economy? Basically, we are we are working uh, on a very important subject uh, dealing with circular economy. Is the question of uh, plastic recycling? You know, perhaps that the technique uh, that is used now is uh, uh, mechanical recycling which is not a very efficient technique. And we have tried five years ago to develop a new technology using a chemical re uh, retreatment, which is much more efficient. Uh, we, we come back with chemical process, we come back to the initial polymers, and we are able to, based on those polymers, to build what, uh, what uh, whole kind of plastics. So very efficient process. And we succeed to, to, to develop uh, new, new, new processes and uh, we are uh, almost ready. We will begin to build a pilot of the new, this new technology with our partners, which are uh, our subsidiary access. 
plus uh, company, uh, Japanese company, and this pilot will, will be built uh, next year in Japan. If it's a success, we I think that will be ready for going into industrial uh, uh, at the stage of industrial development, full development in perhaps two or three years. So mm -hmm. we are ready. So you see 10 years to develop from scratch to the industrial application. Roughly, we need uh, generally 10 years from an idea uh, uh, and then as, uh, an industrial application. For recycling, you need 10 years to start with the idea and then to, to implement it. Generally, that, that's, we, that's what we observed. Uh, come starting from the initial idea, then we, we got to make some uh, test testing, then pilot, an industrial pilot, then uh, a full application. So generally speaking, we we need uh, ten years, and okay. and, it, and it's quite short. Uh, is IFP Energy Nouvelle still active in the area of oil and gas research? Uh, roughly, uh, as I said, uh, forty-five percent still uh, of our activities are dealing with oil and gas, up upstream, upstream and downstream. Uh, we we work a lot in partnership with with the industry. Clearly, we don't we don't inject public money in that activities. Basically, funded by the industry. Uh, so in the upstream sector, we are working on the basin and the reservoir modeling software, for example, with the objective to reduce uh, uncertainties and to optimize operations. Uh, we develop also technologies in the pro in, in, for production, like offshore equipment, like risers or flexible pipelines. And we got um, a special subsidi subsidiary of IFPEN, which is called Basic Front Lab, that is very active on this uh, on the upstream sector. Mm -hmm. For the downstream uh, sector, we act uh, from right refining petrochemistry. We uh, we are here. Our skills in catalytic chemistry, in process engineering, allow us to develop new processes and to design catalysts of high efficiency, and with lower environmental impacts. And also, in this case, we got we have created historically um, a subsidiary of uh, IFPEN, which is called Accents, which is on, on one of the leader of uh, catalyst activities. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we work also in the field of training. We got a subsidi another subsidiary of uh, IFPEN, which is called EFP Training. Which, uh, which uh, develops and certifies the competencies of oil and gas, petrochemicals, and power train professions uh, using uh, public or in house customized session of training. And the last point I would like to mention it's not training, it's initial training. We, we got a nice school inside Spain, the high school for engineers, which is called the EFP school which provides the students and young professionals from across the world uh, with specialized engineering degree, master's degree in the fields of oil and gas, petrochemicals, power trends, and also obviously new energy technology. And uh, can we now talk of climate change and the transition towards net zero emission energy, especially that France is celebrating these uh, coming days, Paris Accord on Climate Change since uh, uh, the five years that was signed? It's an important matter, obviously. Uh, and uh, if you try to find solution to, to climate change, there is no only one solution. We will need uh, probably a, a cocktail of uh, technologies and so on, depending on the domain. Uh, for industry, for, as an example, uh, for example, steel industry or whatever, uh, we probably need to develop a CCS solution, cap carbon capture and storage or util usage and storage. Uh, we also got to develop uh, uh, hydrogen solution for production of hydrogen. 
also with CCS coming from gas, reforming of gas, then you had CCS to produce clean uh, blue hydrogen. Uh, that, that was for industry. Uh, for mobility, probably we will need uh, biofuels, uh, second generation bio, biofuels. And for uh, EV transportation, the solution uh, could be more uh, with also with hydrogen again as as a new age of hydrogen. Uh, and for small vehicle, we can imagine to go to electric development of electric uh, motorization, electric vehicle. Uh, and also, we've got to work on uh, uh, electrical renewables. Uh, with the question I mentioned about the uh, importance to develop also storage, uh, electricity storage, uh, uh, energy storage for electricity uh, uh, that we will need also uh, to compensate the vari vari variability of the production of uh, uh, renewables. So a cocktail of solution has to be developed to, to, to cope with the problem. Mm. You just mentioned actually uh, hydrogen, and we hear a lot uh, about the hydrogen economy. To the long term, what what of other technologies, and specifically the hydrogen economy, is there a future for hydrogen, perhaps produced cheaply, when combined with cheap off-peak electricity from nuclear plants? Yes, the, the question is, uh, you mentioned. Hydrogen economy, you, you're right. It's a quite complex question. There's the question of how to produce hydrogen and the question how we can use it uh, uh, efficiently. Uh, concerning the production of hydrogen, uh, we talked uh, of a gray hydrogen directly pr produced by reforming of gas without CCS. Then after that, uh, a, li a, a little more green, there is the blue hydrogen produced with the same reforming reforming of gas plus CCS. Or, uh, uh, or it could be, as you mentioned, produced directly by nuclear power, electricity produced by nuclear power. And the green one, which, which is probably the goal in the long term, is production of hydrogen using renewables. Uh, our, our position and the, the work where we are, we are doing a lot of work about CCS, generally speaking, not only for our production of hydrogen, for other subjects also, uh, is probably an intermediate step before being able to have a massive production coming from renewables. And we are working on that. So that's uh, the first point. Uh, concerning the use of hydrogen, uh, probably the long-term solution will be to use uh, uh, fuel cell plus electrical uh, motorization in, in certain application. Again, our feeling is that an intermediate solution, perhaps less expensive, could be to develop uh, use of hydrogen in classical motorization, as, a, as a directly as a fuel in, in motorizations. And we are working on that. We are making tests now in uh, in, uh, in in Lyon, in the south of uh, of France. We got uh, a site, a special site, and we are making tests on uh, on motorization, trying to uh, to to use direct uh, hydrogen as a direct fuel for for this motorization. Mr. Chairman, I heard Mr. Macron yesterday or before yesterday in Le Creusot. It seems that uh, electricity from nuclear will remain very important for France. You, uh, what's your comment on that? Perhaps uh, first, it's very important nowadays. Well, mm. It's more, I don't know if uh, if every, everybody knows it, but uh, for electricity, 80%, roughly 80% is coming from nuclear in France. It's uh, not a classical situation compared to other countries. And uh, what I've said, uh, if I will uh, understand, Mr. Macron has said that is he want to that we decrease the share of nuclear from 80% down to 50%. But but 
then then stop and try to have a, a, a real mix 50 50 50 percent of nuclear 50 50 percent of renewable that that will be the target for france and uh, obviously in such a mix having such a mix would be a good uh, a good solution for producing hydrogen mm -hmm. in the middle term mm -hmm. Uh, we've seen that uh, significant uh, carbon dioxide emissions just come from a few countries and industries. Is climate change just a rich country's problem? Some developing countries could say you create the problem, you cure it. Perhaps with some justification. What would you say to these countries? Obviously, they are right. Uh, we are a developed com country and we have... Uh, uh, to develop our, ourselves historically, we we need we have needed more uh, to use a lot of energy, and historically it was not clean energy. So we have uh, an historical responsibility. But I would like to add that developing countries will have a responsibility because they will need more energy per capita to develop uh, to develop themselves. Uh, so that's very clear. And I would like to add that some of those countries, developing countries, uh, got a very dynamic demography. So more energy per capita multiplied by more people. So you you are also, you will be responsible also uh, of the problem in the future. And uh, my feeling is that in, su in, in such a situation, we got past responsibilities you you have developing countries uh, future responsibility so you we got to imagine and it has been already imagined to find a mechanism of solidarity and the solution that has been found it was 10 years ago uh, under the umbrella of the united nations was to create a fund financed by the rich rich countries uh, to finance a project of developing countries and this this fund is if i well remember it's called um, green fund for climate change so there uh, i don't know the, the the target 10 years ago was to have uh, 100 uh, billion dollars in this fund to help to organize ecological transition for for, for everybody but especially to help developing countries. Okay. Certain heavy industries are very large emitters of carbon dioxide. Steel, concrete, aluminium are certainly large emitters. But the path to reduce emissions in these industries appears difficult. What can be done about heavy industry? Well, if industries by definition are large energy consumers, as you mentioned, and they use mostly hydrocarbon energy. Uh, and the one way, probably the only way to decrease the CO2 emission is to deploy uh, CCS technologies, carbon capture and storage. Uh, IFPEN has been working on CCS since the 10 years, for 10 years, uh, transferring and adapting know-how resulting from gas treatment to specific issues raised for CO2 capture and know-how from exploration and production to CO2 geological storage. And the key point for us, it's not storage, it's clearly the capture phase, which are the emitting sources, at the, ch the chimney, the exhaust of those, uh, those in industries. And the challenges are to optimize the costs but also, also the energy penalty of capture process. That's the key issue for us. <clears throat> and also to develop more polyvalent processes for a large number of CO2 sources. And we are very active nowadays on those subjects. We are working, uh, for, as an, uh, for, I'll, give you, I'll give you two examples. We are working with uh, Total in, in China to install a uh, capture technology on a refinery so I'm talking about refinery and in the same time we are working with ArcelorMittal in total also in France and Dunkirk 
uh, with a special te technology adapted to a steel plant of ArcelorMittal. And it's in the north, in, uh, it's in the north, yeah. And we are very near uh, to have a, a good solution. I would say that uh, also again in two, perhaps two years or three years, we will be ready. Uh, now we are working on pilot, demonstration pilot, but we will in two or three years, if everybody uh, go well, we will be ready to have solutions, industrial solutions for, for those two kind of industry, two important uh, kind of industry. So that's a, a, a key uh, a key technology, CCS. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Chauvet, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think we'll have to leave our interview now. Thank you for your insights and your time today. We look forward to hearing from you again with future interviews.